Amanda. Long live the spirit of Fidel Castro. Long live. Long live the spirit of Fidel Castro. Long live. Malibongwe. Comrades from all the structures of our democratic, um, ally, of, 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 from all the structures of our alliance, starting with Sanko, with the SACP, with the COSATU, and ending with our Secretary General. And of course, Comrade Mashobo sitting there, and the Youth League. Today, we are gathered here to bid farewell and to celebrate the life of an internationalist, of a towering revolutionary giant of our time, Comrade El Comandante Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro, despite the fact that he was born in a comfortable upbringing, in a comfortable family and was brought up in a comfortable upbringing, as soon as he got to university, he immersed himself in liberation politics, in revolutionary politics. And as he was studying law, he started dedicating his life to the ideals of nationalism, anti-imperialism, to the ideals of internationalism. We are celebrating a life of a person, a revolutionary, who was not afraid to go to prison for his ideals, who mobilized, who at the age of 32 had successfully concluded and liberated the people of Cuba. How many of us at the age of 32 would have done that? He is a revolutionary and one of a kind. But he did not just dedicate himself to the freedom of the Cubans, but he dedicated himself to the freedom of Latin Americans, Africans, and other oppressed people of the world. Of course, as soon as they got into government, they were faced with numerous problems, but you can see that their focus in everything they did was for the betterment of their people. Whether it was the reforms that they introduced that opened more than 10,000 new schools and, result, and the literacy campaign that resulted in 98% literacy, which is the highest literacy in the world. It's a country whose health system is second to none, a country whose infant mortality is, the, is amongst the lowest, even lower than most of the developed world. And of course, Fidel Castro made sure that not only Cuba was free, but Africa and other countries. The Cubans contributed not by speeches, but by their blood to our liberation and to the liberation of many other countries in Africa. In fact, the canvas of our liberation is heavily woven together by the portraits of, Pres of President Fidel Castro. You can see many portraits of him standing with young Agostino Neto, discussing what to do about the defeat of Portuguese. You can see him with smiling Kwame Nkrumah, you can see him with attentive Julius Nyerere, you can see him with resilient Samora Marshall, you can see him with pensive Oliver Tambo, you can see him with welcoming Nelson Mandela, you can see him 
with many of our liberators in our continent and elsewhere. Of course, as South Africa, and I'm sure the Secretary General will dwell on this, but we cannot forget that we are here in a democratic South Africa in large measure because of the contribution of the Cubans, especially their contribution in training our people, but also in that decisive victory of Quito Cunavale. We are here to celebrate a comrade, a revolutionary who did not expect anything in return, but was happy when he could see people being free. When he came here in 1998, and when he addressed us in parliament, he had this to say, I quote, that the Cuban forces fought together with African soldiers and officers on this continent for national independence and against foreign aggression. From the African land in which they worked and fought voluntarily and selflessly, they only took back to Cuba the remains of their fallen comrades and the honor of having fulfilled their duty. Close quote. Comrades, we are here celebrating the life of Fidel Castro, who was very instrumental in non-aligned movement, who was very instrumental in many other progressive organizations. And we'll remember that his Minister of Industry, Che Guevara, when he was at the UN, at the United Nations in Geneva, said South Africa violates the Charter of the Human United Nations by the humane and fascist policy of apartheid. He called on South Africa's expulsion from the UN. And of course, the Cubans participated in many of our struggles. But let me also say that Comrade Fidel understood that Cuba could not stand alone, strong as it may have been, 90 kilometers away from the United States that had an illegal blockade up to today. He understood that Cuba's destiny is intrinsically linked with Africa and other countries of the South's destiny and fortunes. The solidarity between the people of Cuba and Africa mirrors our intrinsic and communal African values of compassion, kindness, sharing, as President Castro said. I quote him again, our country is not just Cuba. Our country is also humanity. Close quote. So, President Fidel Castro not only was selfless, but he instilled that spirit of selflessness, that spirit of revolutionary into the Cuban people. And of course, he continued his commitment to Africa, even po post-colonial times. He trained African doctors, engineers, and many other professionals. He sent thousands and thousands of Cuban doctors to more than 32 African countries. And we will recall that even in this country, between 1996 and 2002, Cuba sent 450 Cuban doctors and lecturers and deployed them to this country in order to assist us towards a better life for our people. And even as we speak today, there are thousands of African students studying in Cuba, including South African students, especially 
in the medical field. But we'll also remember that two years ago when there was Ebola in three of the West African countries, Cuba outside the continent sent the biggest contingency of doctors and health workers to those countries. And to just illustrate the dedication of Cubans and Cuban doctors who went to fight Ebola, one of them contracted Ebola. He was evacuated out of West Africa for treatment. He was treated and he survived. And his family said he must come back home. He said, no, I'm going back to fight Ebola until Ebola is conquered in West Africa. How many of us would have that kind of dedication? Only the Cubans would have that kind of dedication. And of course, as I'm speaking on behalf of the Women's League, I also want to say Fidel and the Cubans are amongst the high-ranking nations in the advancement of women. Women played a significant role in the Cuban history. Not only did many women fight in the revolution, but many also occupied leadership positions. Women such as Tete Pablo, Celia Sanchez, Melba, Hernandez, Vilma, and many others. The Cuban government has passed many laws and legal regulations ensuring the human rights of its people, but also of women. And a conscious effort has been made to push forward the equality for women. These laws include the protection of women's reproductive and sexual rights, the rights to family planning, health, education, and social security, assistant, assist, the right to be assisted with housing, jobs, and the Cuban constitution guarantees equal economic, social, and political rights for women. Before the revolution, only 12% of Cuban women were employed. But today, 60% of all Cuban professionals are women. Today, women in Cuba are 44% in the labor force, but 60% in the, in, the, in the professionals. They are 66% in the technicians, mid-level professionals, and higher degree professionals. They are in the judiciary. They are in the teaching profession. They are in the Supreme Court. They are prosecutors. And they also have 36% of the seats in the National Assembly. As the progressive women of the world, we look to Cuba as an example of implementing policies and laws that protect and further women's rights and ensure social, political, and economic equality for women. Comrades, as we dip the flags of the union of our African Union, member states, and South Africa as that member state, we must remember the legacy of service and internationalism left to us by President Castro. 4A, and I quote him, for a more generous, more jointly responsible, and more humane world. Indeed, his life was one dedicated to the equality of all races, ethnicities, sexes, and in his words, we must establish a new world order based on justice, on equality, and on peace. Of course, the colonial and imperial powers did not 
take kindly to his approach, to his revolutionary approach in Cuba. And they did many things, including sanctions, aggression. And his best defense to all the things they did to him was his people. And he is famously quoted as saying, if surviving assassination attempts were an Olympic event, I would have won the gold medal. It is therefore important for us, men and women, and young South African and African revolutionaries, to learn from President Fidel Castro's great contribution to the struggles of the oppressed people of the world. You must, we must use his teachings and revolutionary consciousness to inspire and guide us to strive for a better society and fight for the fulfillment of our generational mission that of socio-economic freedom, a prosperous, peaceful, and integrated Africa driven by its citizens and playing a dynamic role in the global arena. The importance of Castro in the world history is monumental. We will not forget you, El Commandant. We will keep the spirit of your revolutionary ideas alive until our, all our struggles are won. We dip our revolutionary banners and mourn at the same time celebrate with the people of Cuba and the world. And we are happy in the knowledge that he has joined the galaxy of our revolutionary heroes and heroines, Che Guevara, Vilma Espin, Simon Bolivar, Edward Montane, Martin Luther King, Thomas Sankara, Tusan Olufchel, Harry Guala, Charlotte McLeke, Pixley Gasseme, Governor Mbegi, Sisulu, Bram Fisher, Ho Chi Minh, Kwame Nkrumah, and many others. Long live the spirit of Fidel Castro, long live. Long live the spirit of Fidel Castro, long live.